What is happening, everyone? Welcome back to G-Ball Vision. Today, I have for you a 2023 recap. We are going to go over and touch on a lot of the knives that were my favorites in a variety of different groups. And we're going to kick it off with a more budget end, and then we're going to just kind of work our way to the end. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. We're going to kick it off with my favorite budget knife of the year, at least concerning $50 and under. The Migron Centurion comes in under 50 bucks, guys, and you're getting 14C, 28N for the blade steel. You get multi-deploying options here, a nice finish. They did have several flavors of these. You're getting semi-contoured G10 handles that are very well finished, nice and grippy, but they also are smooth as well. So very well finished G10, very reminiscent of what Artisan uses on some of their higher G10 ended knives. And then you're getting a milled titanium pocket clip. And this is all for under 50 bucks, guys. I've harped on this knife all year about how good of a knife it is. And it has held true up until now. This is a fantastic value right here. The Migron Centurion in its budget form. Great size, great materials, great price tag. Let's get to the next one. Now, two runner-ups I had for great budget knives of the year. We have the Petrified Fish Viking, and we have the Migron Moyero, two outstanding knives. The Petrified Fish could routinely be had for $40 throughout the year. You're getting Bowler K110. It is D2-like, but because it's coming from Bowler, you're going to have you know a more concentrated heat treat, a better protocol for the K110. In a sense, you get a nice straight back blade here, very pokey. You have a long belly to that pokey tip. You have some very nice micarta. My card of backspacer with a hidden lanyard hole there. It does come with a deep carry steel rollover clip. I threw this milled clip on here uh, back when I was, you know, really digging on this knife. I still am. Uh, it's I just haven't gotten to carry it as much. You have this nice swell going back here, so it's very hand filling. Even if you have large, extra large hands, it's very hand filling, very nice. You got multi-deploying options with the fuller and the front flipper. Nicely tuned detent. Great job from Petrified Fish, and I look for them to continue their good work. Then we have the Migron Moyero coming in around $50 all year. You have this cutout for deployment. 14C, 28N. Uh, they came in a variety of different flavors as well. Great access to the liner on all three of these knives. Now, you're not getting uh, contoured handles here or semi-contoured handles. They are completely flat. You have a G10 backspacer, and you're getting a milled tie clip. Uh, this is a fantastic knife, guys, and has been one all year long. The value that Migron puts out on the market is almost second to none. Kubi is very close, but I think Migron just etches them out slightly. Uh, but I look for some companies to start really competing with Migron, adding a titanium clip in. You know, that kind of seals the deal in my opinion. A lot of companies are doing 14C and G10 for 60-ish bucks. But let's get a milled clip on there, and you are really starting to toe that line of fantastic value for that $50, $60 mark. And Migron figured that out very early on. Let's get to the next round of knives. So guys, CJRB just all year has literally just killed it from the start of the year to the end of the year. And what I mean by the end of the year is they just put out the CJRB frack and I am carrying it right now as we speak. The CJRB Hectare, man, if they keep this up in 2024, I am going to be ecstatic. I'd love to see them start experimenting and using other steels as an option you know keep your rpm 9 of course but let's dabble in something else 
that is still in the budget realm. I know they're dabbling in S90 and other premium steels. Why don't we dabble in like 14C, 154, S30, something like that. Uh, you know, somewhere in the middle of their RPM9 and the premium stuff they're using. I would love, love to see it. But the uh, CJRB frag here is an absolute monster RPM9. You have this frag textured uh, steel handle here. I did throw a milled tie clip on here. It just really makes this thing pop. The spring is just absolutely fantastic on this thing. Great size, great ergos, great price tag. And if you want a well-refined button lock, then CJRB is the first company I would look at no matter which button lock it is. Particularly this one though, this is just hitting on all cylinders in my opinion, especially if you like a little larger of a knife. Absolutely love this thing. And this is my button lock of the year as far as affordable budget button locks go. When they start hitting 90, 100 bucks, uh, I don't know if I classify that as budget, kind of where some of Civivi's higher end uh, button locks are. But definitely, in my opinion, this is the budget button lock of the year, no question. Solid plunge lock, lock up, definitely my favorite of the entire year. And then we get to this guy. I have limited you know, use with this as I just got it a few days ago. But this thing, guys, CJRB just continues to nail it. This is their first uh, experimentation with the crossbar lock. And let me tell you guys, uh, it's a very simple design, drop point blade, full flat grind. Well, I guess you do have somewhat of a saber grind here. There's a tiny bit of flat here. So it's almost a full flat, but uh, very thin behind the edge, a nice satin finish, nice smooth uh, finish on this guy here. You have this nice big opening hole here for your thumb and reverse flicks. Jimping on the spine. A little choke up spot here behind the edge. G10 handles. And these come in around like 50 bucks, guys. So it's not like they're asking an arm and a leg for this. Very simple design. Ergonomically friendly. Very comfortable in hand. Even if you have extra large hands, you should still get a full purchase on this guy. Uh, very comfortable. I don't feel anything in hand. I don't feel the clip. I don't feel the spine. Very comfortable. Nice little slicey drop point blade. And lockup is solid as a rock. Nice springs in there for that crossbar. Very stout springs. And CJRB just continues to impress me. Uh, you know, I... I can't wait to see what they have in store for us in 2024. But if they continue down this road and start giving more options when it comes to steel choices, you know, have some aftermarket accessories like they came out with the titanium pocket clips here, you know, continue experimenting and opening up those doors. And CJRB is just they're going to be in the mix when it comes to the best affordable knives from a company that is on the knife market, period. The CJRB Hector, don't sleep on this thing. It is a fantastic little drop point crossbar locking knife. Uh, I've been carrying this around the last few days and it's fantastic. Very well done, especially at 50 bucks. So another reason for me doing this video is there's a couple knives I didn't touch on and that's merely because I forgot about them. Uh, we have the Devo Knives Pony Stout, which guys, that is, should have been in my, you know, under $100 favorites. It's a knife that I forgot came out this year. That's the only reason I looked at it and I was like, oh, that came out in 2022 and i was mistaken this knife or actually did this come out under 100 i can't remember maybe that's why i missed it but i can't remember exactly why i missed it but regardless uh this is a fantastic little edc knife fifth pocket knife 
You're getting 14C28N with that nasty sheep's foot blade. Looks great. Works great. Action is very, very good. You have good access to that liner. Very nice micarta. You have a two-way reversible deep carry wire clip. Uh, just a fantastic little utility EDC knife, and that is my fault for missing on this thing. Uh, it should have been somewhere in my groupings, and I just I missed it, uh, so that is my fault. But this knife definitely deserved to be on a list uh, somewhere in my 2023 list, but uh, I overlooked it. My fault on that, but this is a fantastic little fifth pocket EDC user. And this guy, I really uh, fell in love with this knife. I got this just because it looked crazy in the videos and pictures. The Kaiser Cobalt 2. Now, they did come out with a couple different flavors of this knife. I opted for the 4V and the aluminum, and this thing... It's awesome, guys. It cuts very well. Yeah, I'm sure the 4V isn't heat treated to its highest spec that it could be or its best treatment that it could be at. But the cutout, the front flipper work very well. That sheep's foot blade is nice and long. Comes down pretty thin. I love this little ridge here so that way you have a place to put your pointer finger to control that tip. Nice black wash finish. The aluminum handles are very nice. You have a nice deep carry clip there. Gear G10 backspacer. And these were right around 100 bucks in this configuration. They also offered a micarta and 154cm version, which would have also been a banger of a deal. The Kaiser Cobalt 2 is another one that I forgot to add to, you know, a certain list. And I definitely am a huge fan of this knife full-size sheep's foot blade coming in a variety of different steels great action great ergos great price tag definitely deserve to be on a 2023 list another couple knives i wanted to bring out was the vostid raccoon sheep's foot and the savivi sakoki two fantastic budget knives right here guys 50 60 bucks for the both of them 14C28N for the both of them. You do get dull thumb studs on the Raccoon. Nice strong crossbar lock. My car to handles. You get a deep carry clip there with recessed screws. And you get a filler tab on the show side. That way our lefty brothers can carry it and keep it nice and clean on this side as well. Nice useful sheep's foot blade. Nice finish on that blade. Love this sheep's foot version and the crossbar lock. Way better than the button lock in my opinion. Uh, the raccoon cleaver sheep's foot style blade with the crossbar lock this thing is definitely a winner at that 50 to 60 dollar price range then we have the savivi sakoki burlap micarta 14c28n ray laconico design good access to that liner multi-deploying options with the front flipper and dull thumb studs Love this little guy at the price that it's at. I think I saw Stasa put this as his budget knife of the year, and I could definitely see that all the way around. Nice drop point blade, cuts very well, very comfortable in hand. You have a full burlap micarta backspacer. You know, you have a pocket clip here that works, deep carry, recessed, lots of space. Sakoki definitely high up on my 2023 budget knives of the year. Let's get to the next batch. Now, I would be remiss if I, you know, didn't bring this whole group of knives out. Migron and AMA, as I said, with their budget line, they just absolutely slayed it this year, giving us a great value for our money. They came back with a lot of version twos. You have the Prayer 2, the Flix 2, the Gladiator 2, you have the Curex 2, and then you have the Migron Pegos. Now, these all came out in 2023, and this isn't even all of them. They just they did a fantastic job. S90V, S90V, 
S90V, M390, and I believe this is an M390 as well. Yes, M390. So, I mean, and all these knives were under 200 bucks, guys. Some were down around 140, 150, and then you had some that were like 180 ish. But Migron and AM8, same company, have just absolutely slayed it this year. You know, you're getting titanium, you're getting carbon fiber inlays, you're getting micro milling. That's been done beautifully, like you have here on the Curex 2. Just they are doing fantastic. Uh, you know, my only nitpick would be, you know, that they sure could heat treat their steel uh, a little better when it comes to certain ones. The S90V, as far as I could find out and everything that I've seen, the S90V is heat treated to where it should be. The M390 is basically the industry standard of 59 to 61, and that's what you're getting pretty much everywhere. Uh, for the most part, there are companies who are doing it better than that, but you know the average, that's what you're going to get for the most part, but you're going to be getting it at a much cheaper cost with Migron, and you're still getting the full effect of titanium, great build, great action, you know, great factory edge, uh, hard to beat the Migron series of knives, even from, you know, their more budget line, like the Centurion here, the Moyero, all the way up to the Flix 2, which is the most expensive one I have, which came in around 180, 190, and fully worth it. Milled tie, copper infused carbon fiber, titanium backspacer, pocket clip, multi-deploying options, S90V, great blade shape. Uh, just a hell of a year for Migron, and I hope they continue doing this into 2024 as well. Let's get to the next batch. And we'll do a quick once over with one of my favorite companies, if not my favorite company of all time, EMP EDC. They had another hell of a year. We have the Relative and Magnica. It was also done in LMAX. We have the new Nimble T version 2 series. We also had a brand new Nimble X version 2 that was done. Just a beautiful pocket knife. Then we had the Ronin in LMAX. LMAX, LMAX. He also did the Urban EDC Supply Exclusive in the Segaha and LMAX. Just a fantastic year for EMP EDC. I love the expansion of using different steels like the Magna Cut, like the LMAX, coming out with some different designs, but also refining some of his other designs and refined they are. Uh, I am missing the auto that he just recently did, and he also came out with the Thick Boy version 2, which will be retired after 2023. I believe he is done making these, uh, at least as far as I know. So version 1 and 2, it will stop with the version 2, at least for now. But just a fantastic year for EMP EDC. Love John and his family. Love his designs. Just a great year. Let's go ahead and get to the next batch. So another knife that I didn't place anywhere. It's because it kind of got pushed into the back of my knife case. But the Tuya Skeleton Blades Caladan was one of my favorite knives. Still is one of my favorite knives of the year. It's a flipper only. Coming in S90V, it has a hand rub satin drop point blade, kind of a sheep's foot style blade, but very good flipper action, nice and smooth, uh, very comfortable in hand. You have this nice little guard here that you can get right up on this thing. Now, you can't get right up behind the edge, but in some cases, you know, that's the way designs work. Does it bother me? Not really at all. Um, cause I have plenty of knives that I can, that I have a finger choil to get up on or a 50, 50 choil. Uh, so I don't need every knife to have that. And I really have enjoyed this thing. He's also come out with a couple other models 
with Tuya as well. Uh, more recently, this one has titanium bolsters. It is a bolster lock. You have marbled carbon fiber as your secondary handle material, titanium clip, and backspacer. Love this thing, and it just it looks awesome. It's a unique looking flipper. Look at that hand satin. Just a beautiful knife, and they were priced very well, especially coming in S90V. Love the Caladan, and uh, I didn't do a two and hundred and up, and that's kind of why this one got overlooked a little bit, or not overlooked, but just missed. And that is one reason because the market is so massive when it comes to 200 and up or 300 and up. There's just such a massive amount of knives. Um, and, and I have my fair share, but uh, I just didn't want to dive into something 200 and over. Uh, you're getting into a lot in that case. And that is potentially why, you know, this one just didn't fall into any given category uh, of the 2023 videos. But the Caladan now has a version two. Definitely a fantastic knife if you really like flippers and a unique design. Caladan is awesome. Now, my favorite gent knife of the year, the Oser F22 Urban EDC Supply Exclusive. This thing is fantastic, guys. It's almost like you're pushing a button for an auto. The kickstop on this one is just fantastic. Very, very well done. Detent is tuned perfectly. As soon as you push that down, it's just coming out a hell and very comfortable, nice sleek design. Got a traditional look to it, but it's got all the modern accoutrements to it. Titanium clip, micarta, nice little, I don't know what that would be, an inset frame lock basically or an inset liner lock. Just very well done from Oser and Riot. Love this knife and I will continue to do so. Don't overlook the Oser F22. Fantastic EDC, fantastic gent knife, all the way around. Great little flipper knife. Love this thing to death. Now we got the Vosteed RS Chaos, guys. I've been raving about this thing since I got it, and I still have it in hand all the time. Uh, it's a great knife, especially the White Mountain Knives exclusive in LMAX with the Warren Cliff blade. Now, some people don't like this dull grind here. I really don't. I have to say, I don't even notice it. It doesn't have a particular use for it. I don't know. Not really, but even it, you know, whether it does or doesn't, doesn't bother me at all. It gives it kind of a unique look to the, to the knife. Um, you know, the same people who bitch about something like this. Now, if you don't like it, that's fine. But people who want unique knives will often bitch about the unique knives that come out that are well done. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, and if you don't like it, that's, you know, up to you. There's every knife, there's a knife out there for everyone. Not every knife is for everyone. So you, that's something you have to keep in mind. But as far as this being very well done, executed perfectly, you know, and this was their first attempt at the compression lock and they absolutely nailed it. I've compared this time and time again off camera and I've done it once on camera with the smock. And in my opinion, the smock just doesn't compare. Um, you know, it just don't. The action, the lockup, you know, they're both solid, but there's just something this has something. I don't know what Vosti did with these, but it's just got a little edge on the smock where I continue to give the nod to the chaos. That's just me personally. I love my smock, but I like this just a little bit more. I like being able to use this full choil here. I can get right up on the edge, get right up on the tip. Uh, you know, you have the dual deployments with the flipper and the cutout. Uh, 
very comfortable in hand, titanium all the way around. Uh, just a unique design, and it has made me a huge fan of this knife, and I'm glad I picked one up. This is one knife that, if it looks good to you, I can highly recommend trying to get yourself one of these. It's an awesome, unique little EDC knife. Love it to death, the RS Chaos. And that all brings us to the Jaeger M version 2, the last knife, or, well, the second to last knife that I picked up. I did get the Hectare after this, but just a beautiful gentleman style EDC knife. Very well done. M390, you have a beautiful hollow grind. Beautiful, guys. Just an amazing hollow grind on this thing. And you get the flipper, you get the cutout. Nice thick blade stock as well. Beautiful carbon fiber inlays on a bronze titanium finish. Uh, just an exquisite knife. Let me know what some of your favorite knives of the entire year was. Let me know if you have quite a few. Let me know if you only picked up a couple. I don't care if they're budget knives, middle of the road production knives, high production. Let me know what some of your favorite knives of the entire year was. I love hearing from you guys. Consider hitting the subscribe button. I would love to have you here and have you become a part of the family here. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button before you head out. I love you guys, and I hope you have a happy holiday. Merry Christmas, and I will catch you on the next one.